Hey there, everyone. I am Chris. This is Simply Classic. And today we're going to talk about all these leather scraps. Sometimes it feels like they just kind of take over. And I personally have a great big, huge bin here filled with leather scraps. So before we get started, I want to talk to you about how I kind of organized my piles here. I dumped everything out on the floor, which was the easiest thing for me to do. And then I organized them by color. So I put all of the, you can kind of see here, I have all like the brown tones together. And then I have all of the blue tones together. I have my kind of mauve pink tones. And then I have some black as well. So let me just... All right. Hey, Sandra, we are doing this live today. Thank you so much for joining. Today we're talking about leather scraps. <clears throat> in fashion and in my Chris fashion, hey, Julie, I have, see a Facebook user from North Carolina. Can't see the names on Facebook, so I'm sorry if I don't see your name, but I see you on there. So the first thing I do with leather scraps is organize yes let's get scrappy i like it organize it by color and i think you can kind of see my table here i've got a whole stack of brown tones and then i have a stack here of blacks hey barb hey cheryl i've got some blue tones over here and they're falling on the floor and i have kind of a mauve and pink here now, I also have a bin back here, and it's got um, pinks and, like, hot pinks and all different yellows and all that. You can get crazy with this. But I wanted to, in my Chris fashion, show you a little inspiration before we get started. Because, you know, that's where I take a lot of my ideas from is by being out there and looking around. So when we were in Italy, I almost might go back to Italy every year just to get inspired because not that I can't get inspired here. It's just different there. And I don't know how to describe it, but it was just really fun and different. Maybe it was just because I was on vacation, kind of working vacation, right? Um, but this is a bag that I saw. I'm going to bring it up on the screen. And I took the picture through a window. So it's a little bit hard to see. It looks like there's grass over there on the right-hand side. That's just a reflection of the uh, picture. But this is kind of a interesting bag. I saw it, and I, for whatever reason, it really caught my attention. It's not really something I would typically go for, I don't think, because it is kind of a maybe scrappy-looking bag. But isn't it cool? I mean, I just loved it. I love that they use different colors. I love that they use different textures. And essentially what they did is they made their own fabric out of scraps. So it's probably a little bit hard to see on here. But what they did was they sewed all of the leathers together in just straight line sewing, like around the edges of all the little pieces of leather. And probably what they did was they probably glued the edges together and then went back and stitched over it is my assumption. But we're gonna, we're gonna kind of recreate this and, and I'm not gonna do a full bag like this, but what I am going to do is I kind of practice with it. And this is what I did. So I did a Simply Classic Clutch and I just used a bunch of my scrap leathers. And in this one, I used all of the brown tones. And I'm sitting here at my domestic machine because I really like the zigzag stitch instead of straight stitch. I think that it just kind of jazzes it up a little bit. On this one, I actually just used white thread because I was testing it. I was just trying to see if it would work or not. And it really worked out well. I really like it. So this is what we're going to do is kind of create our own fabric. And when you get enough of these pieces together, you just lay your pattern pieces on top of the fabric, I guess we'll call it, the leather fabric that you created, the leather hide you created, and you just cut it out like normal. So it's going to be fun today. 
<laughs> Cheryl, you are brilliant. Thank you. I have to say, I didn't, it's not my idea. I got it from Italy. So, okay. So since I did it in brown, I'm not going to use brown. I am going to get these out of my way though. So I'm just going to put these over here in my bin. And if you are going to Florida, um, so magical Florida, we are going to be taking some of these, I think some of these scraps and probably having like um, just Italian leather scrap bags. So if you're going to kind of keep your eye out for that. All right. So I was thinking about doing either this kind of mauve color with some black, but instead I think I'm going to go with my blues because I have so many blues. It is crazy. I don't know how I got so many blues, but I have a lot of them. So I'm going to put up the mauves. And I have to say, I am so excited to be back. We've had, we went, um, of course, had to get, or we went to So Magical in Tennessee, and we had to get prepared for that. And we were there for almost a week. Um, and so that took up a lot of time. And then we got back, we moved into the new space. And would you believe I'm sitting here with no big light shining on me? This is just light from my space. Isn't it amazing? I'm so excited. And then after that, I went on vacation for a week. So I went to Kansas City. That was a lot of fun. And so now finally I'm back. And I'm really happy to be back because I was going through sewing withdrawals. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I have all these different tones and colors of blues. And I'm just going to really start piecing them and putting them together. So I'm going to move the camera so that you can see my machine and you can kind of see how I do this. And I have my scissors here with me because I am going to probably cut some of these pieces down even more. We're not wanting huge pieces. We just want pieces that kind of fit together. It's almost going to be like making a puzzle. Okay. So before I tell you, or before we do that, let me tell you, I am, let me see if I can find it. I'm using a Schmetz 9014 leather needle. Let me show you the package. I meant to take that out before. Right here. A Schmetz, let's see if you can see that, 9014 leather needle. Okay. And then I'm using a Tex 35 thread in my upper thread. And then I'm just using a lighter weight in the bottom, which I think was just a Tex 27, something you can get like at Joann's, like a maxi lock thread or something like that. All right. Hey, Sandra from Nevada. Okay, I'm gonna move the camera so you can see what I'm doing. So let's see if we can do this without causing too many. Bring it down. Okay, I think that looks good. Hey, Sonia. Hi, Facebook user. Again, I can't see your name. I'm sorry. Okay, so I have this kind of a bluish gray turtle. I'm calling it turtle um, leather. It's not turtle, obviously. It's, it's a regular. Um, I don't think it's lamb. I think it's actually calf leather. So I'm going to start with this. And all I'm going to do is take another piece of leather and just somehow put it on here. So, you know, these pieces kind of look like they go together to me pretty easily this way. So I'm just going to layer it on top of each other. And then using a zigzag stitch, I'm just going to stitch these. And it's getting caught a little bit. This is a little bit of a sticky leather. Put my And as I've told y'all before, my um, domestic machine is very wimpy. So if it does this, I'm sure yours will too. And I'm just letting the machine grab the leather. And I'm not really worried about back stitching because I'm going to be putting another piece of leather and stitching over. 
I'm not worried about the stitches being super even or straight, or I think it just adds to the character of the hide that we're creating here. Okay. So this is what we have. Let me pull it up a little. You see, it's just a regular old zigzag stitch. Hey, Lisa. Thank you, Cheryl. Um, Cheryl says she loves my new space. As soon as we have it done, we're not quite done yet, I will give you all a tour. We're, it's just a lot, but it's coming, and I'm really excited. It's coming along really nice. Okay, so I'm just going to kind of dig through this pile until I can see another, find another piece. And this piece feels kind of big to me. So I'm just going to cut it down and you don't even have to cut it straight. You can just cut it any which way you like. So I'm going to put this one kind of in between these two and stitch over it again. Is that what they call it? Crazy quilting? Yes, this is crazy. <laughs> And the best thing about this is that it's no two pieces are ever going to be alike, right? I mean, they're all going to be totally different. All right. So this piece is kind of hanging out here. I mean, there's really, if you're afraid to cut leather, if it scares you, this is a great project to take some, get some scraps and just practice cutting and sewing because you can't go wrong. I mean, there's literally nothing you can do wrong with this. All right, I have a navy in here. I'm going to cut a piece of this navy off. And I'm just going to put it right there. Now, I do want to show you a couple of things that happen. Sometimes the leather kind of buckles up. And if that happens as we go along, I'll show you how to deal with that. And I also want to show you how to turn corners. I mean, you just lift your needle and turn like you normally would. There's nothing super crazy about it. And as curves and turns happen, I just kind of guide the leather and turn appropriately. So all I'm doing there is just lifting my foot and turning it as I get to the corner. So I'm at the end again, just pull and, or put your pressure foot up and turn just like you normally would, nothing different about it. so far. Isn't it cool? <laughs> Improv quilting. Yeah. And what I did when I, when I made this little pouch, here, let me see if I can put this up somewhere so y'all can see it. Um, I didn't put any kind of stabilizer on the back of this because in some cases you have over, like you see in the back here, this leather is overlapping. And if it was overlapping a lot, I went ahead and cut it. But otherwise, I left it because it just gave the, the pouch or bag or whatever you're doing just a little more stability. Okay. I'm going to put that in there. You can kind of see it. In case we have anybody new coming on. All right. So let's see. So what I tend to do and what I did with this one here is I use the same colors over and over. So now that I used like this here is at the top, I'm going to use another one at the bottom. So I'm just going to cut a piece of that. Get some writing on that, throw that away. And I'll just put this one and put it down here. 
and easy, right? Super simple, super creative. This would be great for um, if you do a leather project for somebody, maybe you can add a little pouch in with some of the colors that they chose for their bag or complementary colors. And stuff again, so let me. And of course we have vending season coming up. I think school's getting back in session and it's gonna be about that time. So this would be great little um, bags for booths if you're vending. Oops, keep thinking my, see I'm a little mixed up because I'm still in my new, or I'm in my new space. I'm trying to figure out what my trash is. Okay, so I think I'm going to go back with this color here. So you all kind of get the idea. So let me see. I'm going to try to make this tuck so you can see what I do when that happens. So let's say I did this and I wasn't paying 100% attention and I kind of made this tuck up. Let me sew it that way. So you're going to see there's, I have a couple areas that aren't laying super flat, which is normal. And put one piece right there and then you'll see how this is if you can see that I put a piece here see how you have like a little hole here that's what I want to show you how to fix so uh, Marion says I would need a new machine my industrial only does straight stitch suppose I could do right sides together stitch and top stitch yes you could or you could just do a straight stitch on this instead of doing a zigzag because that's what the inspiration photo had let me pull that up for you again because I'm not sure everybody was on when. But on this bag here, on the edges, all they did was a straight stitch to stitch those pieces together. They did not do a, a zigzag. So you do not have to do a zigzag. I just thought it add a little interest. Okay, so let me see what else I have here in blues. This can be fun. You can sit here and put the TV on and just, oh, look, at I have a light blue. Now, I probably wouldn't do that just because the t it throws the tone off. You can go crazy. I was thinking about you could do one that had like bright yellow and red and green and blue. You don't have to, I mean, you could go crazy with it, but I don't think that right there would work as well for me. But again, with it being your bag, you can do whatever you would like. That's the beauty of it or your customer's bag, right? Sometimes they, um, they have ideas of their own. All right, so I'm just going to cut a little piece here. I'm going to lay this down so we can create this little hole so I can show you how to fix that. So let me stitch this one down.
turn one more time. Are all the leathers about the same weight? Not really. Um, there are a few of these that are lighter than others. And then, of course, this, that's a good question. This um, kind of turtle here that I'm using is, it's, um, I don't say sticky, but it's kind of got, it's a little tackier, I guess you could say, than some of the others. It's got a different coating on it. The, this one here is super light. It's probably about a 0.6 millimeter, where this one's closer to probably a 0.9 so they don't have to all be the same, but you don't want it to be like a 0.6 and then a 1.5 or something. I mean, you're going to want it to be kind of close. Otherwise, you're really going to have a problem probably sewing it. But yeah, that's a really good question. Most, um, most of the leathers that I carry are lambskins and they're all about the same weight. So if you've purchased leather from me in some of the um, leather sales, this would be a great thing for you to do. And let's face it, it's hard sometimes. You have something this size and you think, oh, I'll find something to do with that. And then you never really do. And it sits there in a bin and you think, gosh, I need to do something with it. This is perfect. I just bought this. Okay. So now you can see this isn't laying 100% flat. And this is our culprit right here. So here's what I do. As I literally just cut it up until it lays flat. And by doing that, you'll see the pieces overlap a little bit. It's kind of like putting a pleat in a blouse or a pair of pants. And then all I'm going to do is stitch right up there. And I'm probably going to do it from the top down. Just lay it flat. Okay, and just like that problem solved. Oops, gosh, my trash is usually on that side. I'll get it straight. Okay. And then see how nice and flat that lays now. And it's just like a little, little design in the fabric in the leather. Hi, Lisa from Texas. <laughs> Leslie says, we poor mortals just watch in awe as you make mistakes on purpose for us. <laughs> that wasn't a mistake. I mean, it just happens sometimes with leather, right? Because leather kind of does wave. You know, when you have a piece of hide, it doesn't necessarily lay flat. So as you put your pieces together, they may not lay flat. <laughs> All right. Isn't that cool? So I could go on. Um, but... First of all, I want to tell you or ask you what kind of scraps or have you thought about what to use with your leather scraps? Because when you look online, a lot of times you find keychains and you find um, uh, pou little pouches and different things you can do with them, which are all really fantastic ideas. But one of the things that I think is unique about these leathers is that you can sew them with a sewing machine. And a lot of the times when we go to Tandy or we go to Springfield or Weaver Leather or one of those leather stores that are fantastic. I mean, don't get me wrong, their leathers are amazing, but you can't necessarily sew them with a machine. I mean, you're going to have to sky them before you do. And so it's a different type of leather. All, all leather has its purpose. It's just I want to show you how you can actually make leather bags by machine. Okay. So that's how we do it. And then we just make, and look at how this turned out. It ended up that I have this in the middle, which I didn't really plan on, but what I would probably do is just go ahead and add another piece of this on the side and just keep going around and then just lay the pattern piece right on top and cut out and just make the pouch or the bag or the flap or whatever it is, just like normal, just like you normally would. Okay. 
Now, one of the thing here, I'm going to lift the camera up so I can talk to the camera instead of you know, looking at, lift you up just a little bit. So one of the things I want to tell you about is we are going to have a sale this weekend on our maker's kits. So it doesn't matter faux leather or genuine leather. All of the kits are going to be 20% off. So it's going to be Saturday and Sunday only. And I will be sending out a coupon code so that you know um, what to use to get the 20% off. But I have to tell y'all, it's really, it's a great deal because in the kits, you get what you need. The only thing that's not in there is the pattern is not included, the stabilizer is not included, and the interfacing is not included. But everything else is included. So just kind of keep those in mind. We have a kit, I think, pretty much for every bag we have. And we have them in faux and we have them in genuine leather in both. So I really encourage you to think about getting a kit in leather and trying it, you know, especially if you have an industrial machine. I mean, obviously that makes it a little bit easier than a domestic, not that your domestic can't handle it, but you know, when you, if you're not sure you've never used leather before, it's a little harder to dive in. I certainly understand that. Um, uh, Mary says, I would maybe use this as a central piece on a tote. That would be really cool. That would be very cool. That would be very unique. So see, I just give you ideas and then you take the inspiration and you run with it. And I love that. So I want you to make sure you post things on the Simple Classic Inspiration Group. And if you have scraps, go ahead and post um, projects like this. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go ahead and post this pouch and probably do a little something with this. And, and post it on there. Like I said, I think a flap, especially if you had the leather, like maybe a bag in the main blue, and then you use this as a flap, you know, I think that would be really, I think that'd be really attractive. That'd be really cool. Okay. So I know this is kind of a short um, live, but what, do you guys have any questions about this or anything, anything that I can maybe help you with? because I certainly want to do that. One other thing I want to tell you, I almost forgot, is, here, let me show you this. I almost forgot. Okay, here's, I'm going to use this kind of navy leather. Can we chat about the Brahmin Alley B? Yes, absolutely we can. Were the leather kits in your patterns... With the leather kits and your patterns, are they drop-in lining? Some of them are. The Leah is a drop-in lining. Um, the, um, let me think. The Alley B is a drop-in lining. So some of them are. And it really depends more on the lining than anything else. Um, Leslie, thank you, Chris. This is inspirational. Ever thought about sewing onto a base fabric? Yes, that would be amazing. Again, like in the center of a tote that, or, or some kind of, that would be really cool. I like that. Um, Chris, I'm having a problem getting zippers to a flat when they are on the edge of, say, a lap bag or wallet. Any advice? I would say um, maybe hit it with a little bit of steam before you put the zipper on that will kind of help it lay flat. And then I find that that eighth of an inch double-sided tape helps hold it in place so it doesn't stretch as you sew it. So maybe try some of that. And you can get that um, Waywack has it. And then also there's a place that I get it from and I will link it in the description after the video. And it's just a random sign company on Amazon and it tends to be less tacky, like less sticky because if I'm going to sew on this machine, it does not like double-sided tape. But that less tacky, it can kind of handle. So I'll post that for you. Um, Sonia says, thank you for all you do. You're welcome. Brenda, I have a friend with one, and she let me have it for a few days. All the seams on it are flat, like you're quilting. 
Um, you talking about she, something like this she had? I'm sorry, I lost you there, Brenda. I think so. Looking forward to seeing you at SME Florida. Fingers crossed and getting a new class. Thank you. We're, okay, let me give you a hint. We're the first class on the first day. So just be, we're doing the, actually, we're doing the um, simple plastic clutch in Italian leather on industrial machines. And we're doing the quilting. So that's what we're kind of give you a little heads up on that. The top piece of the leather binding, it was strange. Oh, actually, let me, sh I don't know if you'll, hold on a second. I'm going to run and get a bag for you. So this is one of the kits. This is um, the Leah and it's an Italian leather and you see I quilted it. It's a very lightweight leather and it is um, quilted like a dream. I mean, that's the one thing about these leathers is they will quilt and embroider beautifully. But you see here, I have this piece going around the top because when I was trying to sew all of this together, at the top, this is a drop-in lining. It was slipping on me and I could not get it to do right. It uh, didn't matter what I tried. So I thought that by adding this kind of accent piece on the top, it would dress it up a little bit, kind of make the plain bag look a little dressier and just fix my problem, right? So you drop the lining in you actually take the front and the back, you just clip it together and you just sew it around first. And then you go back and you add this piece on. So um, this is, this is just a beautiful, we only have, I think like six of these kits because we didn't have a ton of this leather. And this is kind of a, this is like a lizard black. It's really, really beautiful. So it just is a very, a very pretty bag. And I actually, the first time I made it, I didn't quilt it and I had to go back and quilt it because I just felt like it added just that extra little bit that it needed. So, um, Marion, I would like some more ideas for smaller bags to use thinner leather. We do, we do some more designs. Yes, I actually have one that I use all the time. It's a personal bag that I use that I made to go to Italy. It's kind of a, I use it as a crossbody, but you can theoretically almost use it as like a little hip bag. And we put so much in that bag in Italy. I mean, we put, I had my glasses and sunglasses, our cash. I had, because I wanted to wear it underneath our clo my clothes. I had our international driver's licenses, our passports. I mean, it went on and on and on. And we just kept stuff and stuff in there. And I thought, my gosh, this thing is so small, but it fits so much. So that bag is coming. I have um, the actual pattern done. I have a test done. I just need to write the, write the pattern. So be kind of watching for that. Um, I love how you're willing to spontaneously. Oh, you're welcome. I might not know all the answers, but I will definitely try. Uh, Kristen, I want to try a drop in lining. I've never done one. I'm interested in snagging one of these makers kits to try it. Any version you recommend over another. So for the, if you definitely want a drop in lining, I would say, um, the Alley B, but the no grommet hack. And the reason why I say that is because I think that the, the, we have one, it's in faux leather. You want to see that one too? Uh, let me go get it. Hold on. I happen to know exactly where it is. Sorry, I can't get to it at the moment, but it is, um, I did a, a live on it. It is a, an alley bee, it does not have grommets. And instead it has like a flap that goes up and over. And you really need to, you, you can maybe practice dropping. You don't have to do a drop in line on that one, but it, you could practice that and then add the flap and add the shoulder strap. Um, I think that would be a, probably a good start you really can do a drop in lining with any bag. 
you don't have to follow the instructions. You could just finish your bag itself, the exterior, finish your lining and keep your lining inside out or, or right, or let's say the outside facing you. Okay. Stick it in the bag. And what you want to do before you do that is just take your edges and fold them over to the wrong side. So let's say this is the face of our bag. Okay. You'd fold it over. Usually I put double-sided tape and I fold that over and then I take my lining and typically my lining has some kind of upper lining piece. I would fold it over as well. And then I just put those two folded edges together, clip it with wonder clips and then I top stitch and then you don't have to worry about turning the bag. You're basically top stitching and closing the bag all in one fell swoop. Does that make sense? I hope that helps, Kristen. Woohoo, the exact amount of time to make good. Uh, Rhonda, any ideas on getting the grommets to screw in? I'm making the alley B. The screws seem to be too short. I made it out of the alligator faux leather in your grommets, which I love. Maybe my arthritis in my hands. I wish I had done the no grommet hack, but I didn't see it until it was too late. Rhonda, we are actually, um, we will not be carrying the screwing grommets anymore. We have had a few problems with our manufacturer and we have decided that it's probably not, we're just not going to continue with them. Um, you know, they, they screw in fine, but what happens, I think, sometimes is when you have your fabrics and your stabilizers, and then if you have your upper lining and stabilizer, you're right, it gets to be too difficult. So I would suggest, and, and I'm, I'm sorry for having to tell you this, but it's probably to go to like Hobby Lobby or Joanne or go on Amazon and get the grommets that you can kind of press in. And what I mean by that is um, like a lot of times they come with a tool with a hammer and you can hit it kind of like a rivet only their grommets and you're probably going to have a much better easier time with that i have a grommet press that i use i just love it i know everybody doesn't have a grommet press but that hand using the hammer isn't that bad and you can probably go get a packet for eight of eight at amazon or you know like i said amazon hobby lobby and it probably will work okay for you and at least you're not going to have holes in your pad I mean, it's just it'll be a good solution so try that, Rhonda. Um, dropping linings is so much easier. Yes. I don't want to turn bags anymore. My hands are wet. Thank you so much. I'm going to try it. You're welcome, Kristen. And that's the thing, you know, with anything it's in sewing, you try something the first time, eh, maybe it doesn't come out that great. You should see in one of these times, I'm going to keep the bags, my progression of a, a sewing pattern so you can see it like when I start a pattern because the first put together is terrible I mean it's terrible the second put together is usually a little better and usually by the third or fourth time I've got it down so it's not you know it's it's practice practice makes perfect with any bag if you first time you do a bag it's not going to come out near as good as the second third fourth fifth time you do it and that's just human nature i mean you got to go through the process and figure out you figure out little tips and tricks and tweaks as you go along so yeah just try it see how you like it and then if it didn't come out great and eh, try it again and i bet you before you know it you're going to really love it Kristen, that would be so encouraging to see. Sometimes I feel like I'm the only one making terrible things the first and second time. The third time is the sweet spot for me. All right, I'm going to do <laughs> And actually, I had one I made seven times. The Compton. I'm going to tell you the Compton. I made it seven times. And it was, the first few times, it was a disaster. And my husband told me, you need to keep it. And just, just keep it. Just keep them to show. And I said, no, nah, I can't do that. I can't do that because number one, I don't have space. But I mean, these first few were just, I was just trying some things and they weren't working. But it's okay. <laughs> Again, we all do it and don't feel bad about it. I think that um, it's all part of the process. So, Okay, let me show you this one thing I want to show you before we head out. On this bag, 
Let me see if I can figure out which one it is. Okay, it's hard to tell. But this right here, this little piece right here, is the back side of this right here. So, one of the great things about leather is theoretically you could kind of use both sides. So here's the navy. So this navy is the same navy as this right here. But if I turn it over and sew it on, I have the same tone with a different look. And there's nothing that says you can't do that. So let me just sew that on so you can see how that looks. Oh, let me move it here. There we go. So these two right here are the same fabrics, but look at how it looks different. You can see on the back, you can see that's the right side, but it's almost like just a suede of the same thing. So flip it over, turn it around, do whatever you know it takes. You could almost do an entire thing like this of just the right side, the wrong side, the right side, the wrong side. That would look really cool. Uh, Kristen, I came in late. What kind of machine is that? I only have a straight stitch industrial. Okay. So this is my domestic machine. It's a Janome Skyline 7. My industrial, of course, just does a straight stitch as well. So I just came over here to this one. Just give it a try. Um, Cheryl, I'm so inspired after your lives. Thank you for all you share. You're very welcome. Sherry, my granddaughters love getting in my tester bags. Yeah. Uh, Kristen, while wow, seven. I've never had me seven. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty bad. <laughs> uh, Julie. So everybody, Julie is like your favorite person, the person who cuts and packages all this stuff for you. Um, she says, I've watched her process recently, leading my process. Lots of notes and changes happening between idea and pattern. And that is the truth. So right now I'm working on the little Leah. We have two versions. We have the skinny and the mini that we're doing. And I'll let you use your imagination with that one. But hopefully we'll have it in Tester's hands next week, which means you should have it a few weeks after that. So Gloria. Hey, Gloria. Yeah, that's pretty cool putting on backwards. It is. It's really a neat look. I mean, I just, I think this is so cool. So save your scraps, even if they're little. Just put them in a big bin. Sheila says, late to the party. That's okay. Hello. Welcome. We're happy to have you. This is what we did today, Sheila. We did our kind of hodgepodge piece of leather and turned it into this. Isn't that cool? I, um, you know, sometimes you do things and you think, eh, and other times you do things and you're pleasantly surprised. I was pleasantly surprised with this. I was like, hey, I like that. I really do. All right. Well, if you don't have any other questions, we are going to call it a night. I do um, hope that I see as many of you as possible in Florida. I think a lot of you are, at least a lot of people I ship to in Florida. So hopefully I'll be able to meet you. We love Tennessee. It was so much fun. I actually, and I think you probably saw, I got to meet uh, Vicki Bertram. She drove 12 hours to come see me. She's so sweet. She's the one that we named the Bertram after. She was, you know, I mean, every single time I got on uh, the Facebook group, she was posting another one she made. And so I told her, I have to name this pattern after you. <laughs> that's how I got the name, the Bertram. So, um, it was, it was so much fun. So, so yes, be watching for the class. I think they're going to be releasing the class schedule pretty soon for uh, Florida. And um, we are really excited about that. Kristen, thank you, Chris. Love all the videos. They are so helpful. Great. I'm so excited. And y'all know, anytime you have questions, email me. Um, I try to respond within or fairly quickly to everybody. 
I think I'm responding to everybody. If I don't, it's because I missed it somehow. And I, I'm sorry, email me again. But I do really try to get back to all of you. So it's exciting for me. I love it. I love getting to know you and um, at least, especially seeing you in person. So, okay. Well, until next time, happy sewing. Let's see what we can do with some other scraps. <laughs>